the healthcare detective, Frank Lally, has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines and a senior advisor, or perhaps the senior advisor. I would make him the senior advisor to healthcare.com. And... As I am so fond of saying, he detects for us, oh, at this point on an hourly basis. So, <laughs> hi, Frank. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, here I am. I, actually, hourly is hourly is uh, very, uh, very appropriate. So, um, let's have a – look, coronavirus is a very serious subject. Uh, but let's see if we can have just a little bit of uh, fun with it, at least a little bit of entertainment. Because we'll play a little game. I'll present some commonly held beliefs about the coronavirus and the vaccines, and then I'll ask you if you think they're true or false. So, question, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Question number one. Many people say that once you get fully vaccinated, that's two shots of the Pfizer or the Moderna and one of the J&J, fully vaccinated, you can resume your normal life, right? Hug your kids, stop wearing your mask. You, everything's normal again. So, Jill, what do you think? True or false? Well, I think that that's just part of the ridiculous problem. It's like, why would you get vaccinated for something that you're not going to be allowed to do? Okay. So, long uh, short, what is being presented is that is false. You are you have to continue after you've been vaccinated. You have to continue um, wearing your outfits and doing all the stuff that you did before you got vaccinated. Uh, you're absolutely right. I, I, all experts agree, and so do I. Um, look, first, the thing you got to remember here is that you need two or three weeks after the last shot for your immune system to ramp up for, to maximum strength. So don't get that second shot of the, or the J&J and then run out without a mask. It's just not – you're gonna, not going to be safe for until a couple of weeks later. Secondly, at most, your shots will be about 90 percent effective against the virus. That means you're still 10 percent chance – that you can get infected and you may be even more vulnerable to the new dangerous variants like the B117 from the UK uh, which is which transmits at at 50% higher rate so here's what happened to my cousin John a couple of weeks ago in New Jersey where uh, the coronavirus is running wild one week after he and his wife got their second visa they had a backyard party with their two unvaccinated daughters, their husbands, and three granddaughters. They're all age uh, 7 to 11. The next day, both daughters, the adults, got slammed with COVID, as well as one of the husbands, all three of the granddaughters, and John. Now, that's deadly serious for John. He has an illness similar to Lou Gehrig's disease, so suddenly his life was in danger. Now, fortunately... He got two doses of the monoclonal antibodies, like that Regeneron that helped uh, President uh, Trump um, uh, avoid really serious illness. Two weeks after getting that medicine, John's still in bed, but he is feeling better. We've turned a corner. He's getting better. But get this. John's doctor thinks the children brought the virus from their full-time classrooms into the party, probably the new variant, probably that B117, which is now um, the dominant strain in the United States, and especially here in Connecticut. The kids only have mild symptoms, they, like a cold. Yeah, no, kids. They were the spreaders. But I've got I've got a question to ask you. Sure. And that is, um, is the va- just out of curiosity, which vaccine did he get, and is it supposedly effective against the UK variant or not? I well, just it's, it's the Pfizer that he got um and it is it, so no one knows really it, yeah it's a, the it's the pfizer and it supposedly does a pretty good job against the b117 look it may not have been the b117 that's speculation on my part it might be this new one the b156 uh that that's in new york uh, originally um but but certainly the virus, the vaccines were best against the original coronavirus. They're less effective against the variants, and there are more variants coming. Okay, so question two. Many people say you don't need to get vaccinated if you've had COVID, 
because your immune system has been ramped up and it's going to stop you from getting a second infection. Do you think that's true or false? I know that it is – once again, it is said to be <clears> – <throat> once again, that is said to be false. And that's what they say. The experts said that the antibodies you built up probably won't protect you for very long, probably only around three months or so. So to be safe yourself and to protect others around you, get vaccinated. So I'm on the rail trail last week, Jill. I'm on there often. And this maskless guy comes walking toward me. Uh, he obviously noticed my mask and he blurts out, I don't need a mask. I've had COVID. Well, I mean <laughs> – Give me a break. I mean, ill-informed people like that are turning the rail trail into what I call knucklehead alley. I see fewer and fewer people wearing masks. It used to be 80% of the people out there wearing masks. Now you're lucky if you see half the people. And I'm not talking about just the speeding bikers. I'm talking about groups of three and four walking together, yapping at each other. Oh, please. Uh, um, well, I, I have a question be- about that. Be this. I do actually have a question about that outside yeah. because, again, I you know, if you're socially distancing – if you're socially distant, like if you're, but by this point, people in their bubbles or whatever you want to call them, bubbles, pot, people who know each other have been hanging out for a good long while. Now, I think it's perfectly reasonable if you, you know, you don't want that group in your face. But if they are, if 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 you're socially distancing, why? And you're outside, which we learned last year at this time when it's nice. Why do you have to wear a mask? Uh, you know, here's, I, I think it's a habit, Jill. More than anything else, it's a habit. So you're not wearing your mask, and then you turn the corner and you walk into the diner, uh, and, you, and you forgot to put it on. I mean, it, it, the safe thing to do is to is to have your mask at least have your mask with you when you're in public. You don't know who you're going to run into and chat. Uh, or what store you're going to suddenly say, oh, gee, I'd like to buy that book and walk in. So the the best thing you can do is keep your mask with you and wear it uh, when you're when you're anywhere near a stranger or any small group. That gets us to question number three. A lot of people say that once you're fully vaccinated, you got your two shots of the Pfizer and Moderna, you got your J&J, you don't have to wear your mask everywhere. That's to your point, Jill. So – I, you've, you've given us uh, your opinion on that one. Um, but, 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 but it is said that you have – you know, again, but that in my view raises questions, but no, you are supposed to still wear your mask. Yeah. Uh, the, key, the key word here is everywhere, right? Wearing your mask everywhere. Now, experts say you can gather maskless indoors with 10 people or so as long as you are fully vaccinated. All of you are fully vaccinated. So Carol and I are going to host a dinner party tomorrow night. We're really looking forward to it. We've invited my doctor (laughs) and his wife uh, and another couple. We're all fully vaccinated. We're looking forward to a very wonderful evening and a very safe evening. Experts also say you can gather maskless indoors with 10 or so unvaccinated people as long as you've t- they've tested negative, you're fully vaccinated, they've tested negative, and they quarantined after the test for hopefully just a couple of days. We did that over Easter with our family of 13. Now, nearly half of us are fully vaccinated. The rest had tested negative and then quarantined. That includes our gorgeous two-year-old blue-eyed redhead, Gigi. Oh, she is so cute. Um, now, testing a two-year-old may sound overboard. It used to, but it's not any longer. The CDC is warning that the new variants are affecting children uh, much more than, than the original coronavirus. That includes as young as nursery school kids. Now, that's Gigi. She goes to preschool three days a week. And by the way, her, her grandfather, that's me, says she's very, very smart. Otherwise, experts say, mask up in public, avoid strangers, and crowds. Okay, that gets us to our next question. A number of people say the vaccination can give you the virus. (laughs) Now, Jill, I'm not even going to ask you to respond to that one because that one is totally false. Experts say that is, quote, unquote, biologically impossible. But, But here's its root. Okay, the root of that fallacy is the fact that vaccines work. They trigger an explosion of antibodies against the virus. Therefore, you can test positive for COVID antibodies 
that's not the virus. That what's, that's what protects you from the virus. And by the way, if you've seen this one, if you've seen the in, that the virus makes you infertile on the internuts, okay, <laughs> please ignore it. The vaccine will not make you infertile, and it will not give you the virus. Okay, moving on. That's nonsense. Uh, okay, Jill, here's a big one. Many people say you should not trust the vaccines because they were created at a warp speed rush. Now, what do you think of that one? Do you think that's true or false? I, the, the, that has nothing to do with why you, if, if, if you are disinclined to trust them, why you shouldn't trust them. It's got nothing to do with that. Well, I, I can in say, my view, look, I think, yeah, I, I think people they, can make that. I think people can make that argument at this point because we haven't had enough time to definitively assess the vaccines. Now, look at AstraZeneca. Um, the UK no longer recommends it for people under 30. Maybe that's an abundance of caution, but there are fears out there that it actually causes a very rare, bl- rare blood clots in and, the brain. And um, yesterday that was 50, by the way, yeah, but, but the, the, the number, cases. no, it was under 50. Under fit. Well, no, it depends on the country. And it that was, was UK. And the UK has now gone to 50. Okay. Uh, that makes more sense, actually, than under 30. Uh, there have been 44 cases, 14 deaths included, out of 9 million doses. But European scientists are seeing an acceleration in this rare brain clots, especially you know, among women under 60. So that said, our FDA put the Pfizer and the Moderna and the J&J through the usual very rigorous trials. Remember how President Trump was complaining, why aren't they approving, why aren't they approving this stuff? Well, they were taking their time and doing their trials fully, and then they finally approved them. Now, importantly, the FDA has not approved the AstraZeneca. Now, that makes me feel confident about the Pfizer that I got and the Moderna and the J&J. Is so, that FDA? I thought it was only approved for emergency use. I thought all of the vaccines are only emergency use. That's right. And that's one of the arguments that people will make saying, hey, it's only emergency use. It's not uh, – we still need to learn things about these uh, uh, vaccines. That's true. But I feel confident about the Pfizer and the Moderna and the J&J that have gotten at least to this emergency use. So last question. People point to President Biden's vaccinating 4 million people in one day and say, hey, we're winning the race against this virus, against this uh, variants. We can relax now. Uh, We're winning. What do you you think, Jill? Are we winning? Are we losing? Is it a draw? Where are we? I think it's – I think we are business as usual because you've got people who uh, really want it and are lining up for it and you've got people who won't touch it with a barge pole. So, (laughs) Yeah, so that sounds like a draw. Um, I'm worried. Um, only around one third of people in the entire population have gotten one shot. That's only one third. That means at best, the country is maybe four months. I, you know, people cringe when they hear things like this, but it's true. We're, we're probably four months away from 70, 75 percent of us in this entire country getting fully vaccinated. And that will achieve this herd immunity. I call it community immunity that will actually finally stop this virus. We've got 60,000 cases a day still, a thousand people dying. Uh, we're in the we're in the middle of it still. Meanwhile, we will see more variants in these months ahead. And we don't know what that variance will carry. And, they, I, and I think we're going to see many more severe regional outbreaks. So most of the country is in great shape, but there are places that are in terrible shape. Right now, nearly half of the new cases are in five states. That's Michigan, <laughs> New York, New Jersey, Florida, and Pennsylvania, right? You got three of them right next door to us. And Connecticut is, is, is close behind. Well, you also have another situation. We've got not, – not to mention the fact that we've got 11 seconds left. But the <laughs> other situation is if you do have people who are um, uh, testing positive being sent to various places, you know, it's, you're, you're spreading COVID. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Spreading COVID. End of story. Yeah. So it doesn't even matter where you are at. You are, you, you are actively spreading it. So – and I think what we're what we're going to see, I, I think more of these hotspot breakouts. As a variant comes in and it gets into one community, um, the vaccines will not hold up against it, and bingo, we've got an outbreak in a state. So, 
Uh, one last point I want to make here about Governor Lamont and his um, reopening, which I think is is uh, too aggressive. It is premature, um, and he should. He's been stubborn about this, but the experts, a lot of experts are saying he should roll back this reopening. We got positivity rates hitting 5%, hospitalizations over 500, 5 to 10 more people dying each day. This is not wise. It is reckless. And the governor should reconsider tomorrow. Thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and senior advisor to healthcare.com. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcare detective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also look for his book, Your Best Health Care Now, available online, in store, and on my desk. And wish everyone the best for the inaugural dinner party. 